Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only in studio sides of Silva. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am so excited you are here. Welcome behind the velvet rope. Welcome to Bravo. Welcome to the Real Housewives of New York. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, sitting, you know, this is going to premiere. When everyone listens to this, it will have premiered last night. But really, in real time, this is premiering in around six days. Like, are you ready? Like, are you, do you know what is to come? Like, I'm what like, are you feeling? I'm beyond excited. I'm very, very ready to um, show the world what we've been working on. You know, this is something that's been, we've been working on for quite some time. And kind of trying to be quiet about the whole thing is a little bit hard. So, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for everyone to see the new era. Before we get to the new era, because, you know, America, the world is meeting all of you guys for the first time. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a content creator, scout the city. Yep. Talk talk to me. So I am a content, a full-time content creator. That is what I do for a living. I know people don't think that is a job, but it is very much so a very hard job. Um, I have been doing it for about 10 years now. I originally started as an OG blogger, you know, and everybody was like taking photos and writing articles. Um, and it was just about me and my daughter. We were kind of chronicling our lives in New York City, a lot about fashion. And it just kind of evolved over the years um, to what it is now. And I do predominantly in the luxury market, a lot of luxury fashion. So I do all of the fashion months, you know, Paris, Milan. I work with some really great brands that I'm so appreciative of. I got very lucky to get into this space because it is very hard to break into. Um, but my day to day is always so different. And um, I'm always traveling, doing new things. It is a dream job. Yeah, you know, when I go out and I tell people that I'm a podcaster, I say, I literally follow it up with like, trust me, that's a real job. So I get it. People think, you know, and because of what I do, it's also a lot of like online content. It's, right. it's a real exhausting job. It's a job. Yes. You know, a friend of mine was like, oh my God, what should my caption be? Should I post this? Should I not post this? Mind you, she's just doing it for fun. And then an hour later, she still cannot post one photo. And she's like, I don't know how you do this for a living. And then mind you, I'm like posting four to five, six times a day. I saw your, on the Bravo, I think it was on the Bravo website, your home tour in Brooklyn and your closet. And you're like, the closet just gets messy by the end of the week. Oh, it's a mess. I can't seem to keep it together. I don't know how Jenna keeps her closet together, but me, I do about five to six changes a day, especially if I'm creating content. Wow. It just, and I'm trying to run through it. It, it just becomes organized piles on the floor. As a fashion girl, I was asked this once, what if you could wear just one brand for the rest of your life? It's a hard question. This might be the hardest question we're about oh, to face here. Oh, gosh. That's such a hard brand. Uh, it's a hard, I mean, right? a hard question. Um, I'm a Dior girl forever. I am a Dior girl. There, There's so much versatility that I can uh, – uh, mix and match with some of the old archives. So I guess I have to say Dior. I knew you. I thought I wrote it down. That's why I was looking. <laughs> I normally I write down what I think someone's answer is going to be. That's a hundred percent. Just from looking and following you, that's I thought you were going to say Dior. I mean, I work with them quite often. I've gotten to know them. I love the team. I love the clothing. I love the creative director. So I mean, if I can play in archives all day from cruise to archives, I'll be fine. I'm such a Louis enthusiast, but I just, because I'm like, I need to branch out. I just got my first Dior bag. It's from like the new, it's like, it's like it has the elephants on it, the oh, orange with like the so yellow nice. ribbon. Isn't yeah. that a nice yes, one? Yes, that is a really so nice that's, one. I'm like, okay, I'm branching out from Louis Vuitton. Let this me is borrow good. it. You can borrow it <laughs> any day that you want. So I know you were born in LA. You've lived in New York. You've lived all over. But like New York really feels like home. Yes. For you. Um, I've been in New York off and on since I was two. My parents um, were also raised in New York City. They were born and raised in New York City. My mother uh, was Puerto Rican. So she was very much so a New York Rican and her family. So New York is definitely home for me. I went to school here, graduated high school, went to college here. So yeah, New York is definitely a place that raised me. I love it. So Real Housewives of New York came into our lives in 2008. Just doing the math, you were, you know, probably late 20s. Yes. 
So, I mean, did you, uh, do, were you a fan? Did you watch? Like, in what type of, were, were you an avid watcher if you were a watcher? Did you dip in and out? I was a dipper. I dipped in and out. I mean, at that time, I was like a club rat. I was a party animal. I was a bartender in New York City. I was like 27, I think, around 27 years old, going on dates all the time. Like, I was just living my life. So, I mean, I, I would get home at 6 in the morning and wake up at noon and start watching it. You know, it was it was almost like my background music. Um, so, yeah, I did dip in, dip in and dip out quite often. Was there anything from like that first incarnation that like stands out like, oh, my God, like one shocking moment that stuck with you? You know, I'm really. I think the most thing that start, that 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 stuck with me all these years is how much Bethany has grown. I mean, do we remember that episode when she was like, I'm going to get evicted? I'm broke, you know, I have no money. Like she was really struggling and that was real life. And to see where she is now is so admirable. Like she's really hustled her way. So yeah. I think that really stood out to me. And also we're watching people's lives on television. Not too many people can be very real and say, I'm broke. Like I need some help here. For whatever reason, it feels as if everyone is has this whole facade, you know? Like everyone just needs to pretend that there's something that they're not to impress who though. Whereas I felt Bethany very much so was what you saw. And I yeah. I don't know, it just always s stuck in the back of my head. Yeah, like living in the real apartment with like the park, you know, like those right. square parquet floors that we all know too well from our time in our early days in New York. We've all had these kinds of yeah. moments, you know? This is, this is real life. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I applaud her for just being herself. And I think of when she was selling whatever she was selling in that supermarket and then driving around. I mean, I don't think you could pay me enough to drive around in that car in the Hamptons. We were just talking about the Hamptons before, just like that skinny girl car. I mean, that before you are famous or wealthy, like to drive around in that car, I don't, I don't have, I'm not sure I have that self-esteem. It's very humbling. It's, it's a humbling experience. It's very humbling. What about, you know, did you get, like, did you know any of the OGs, like, or any of the original cast members, like, before this whole experience? No, I didn't know any wow. of them before. Wow. Not one. Did anyone reach out, like, once it was announced? Like, did someone reach out to you? You know, Heather, Thompson? Heather Dubrou, Dubrow and I follow one another, and she reached out. She DM'd me with a very, very sweet message, and, you know, she's just, like, basically... You know, good luck, enjoy, enjoy the ride. You know, this is a crazy journey that, you know, no one really knows about unless you're in it and you're doing it. You know, it's hard to explain unless you're experiencing it. So I thought she was really sweet. Dorinda was really nice at Upfronts. She had some great words um, of advice of, and she was great. Um, and I think for the most part, that was pretty, pretty much it. What advice did Dorinda Medley give to you? She told me just be myself, be authentic, be myself, because when you're not, everyone will see right through you. That is good advice. I yeah. think the audience at this point with Housewives is just